Hi, it's Marianne and welcome to day 11 of 12 Days of Plantmas. Today, I'll be sharing with you 11 plant care products that I tried and tested this year and let you know which ones are worth it and which ones you should skip in 2021. All of the products that I'm going to be talking about today, I bought myself. None are sponsored or gifted and I've been using them for the entire year. So for each of the product, I'm going to let you know how I use them, my experience with using them, and whether I recommend those products or not. I'll be talking about 11 products in this video, so let's go ahead and get started. First one is the Root & Grow Root Stimulator and Plant Starter, which basically is a rooting hormone in a concentrated liquid form instead of the powder. At first, I was looking for the powder form, but I saw this and got it instead because it has the same ingredients as the rooting hormone powder, but this one has an added NPK of 4, 10, and 3. And imagine this glass of water is a gallon of water. I didn't want to waste too much water making this video, but I mix a tablespoon and a half of the root and grow liquid in a gallon of water instead of the recommended three tablespoons because I feel that it's a little bit too much for houseplant propagations. And I use that for all of my propagations, whether they're in water or in moss or in any other medium. And this has saved a lot of my propagations. Definitely recommend this. Next is Garden Safe Fungicide, which I recommend if you're not sure what to use against pests. This is a 3-in-1 and gets rid of most if not all types of houseplants pests. To use, spray on plant for 3 consecutive days and stop for another 3 days and repeat if the problem persists. The only thing is this thing's so bad and I would only use it to treat pests not prevent it because it can't be too strong. Next is Castile Soap, which as advertised, it is a multi-purpose mild liquid soap that's also great for plant care. It can be pricier than a regular dish soap, which you can also use, but I believe this one is worth it because this size of a bottle lasts for a while and I've only used about half of it this year with about 100 plants. So there's a few ways that I use this. First is to wash and sterilize roots of plants that has suffered root rot or when I'm transplanting from soil to leca, I wash the roots of the plants with it. And second, I mix about a teaspoon in about two to three cups of water and use that to clean the foliage of plants. And third, I use it along with neem oil for pest management. Next is Neem Oil Extract Concentrate, which I'm sure you heard of the most. It's an organic pest management ingredient and buying the neem oil extract saves you a lot more money than buying an already prepared insecticidal soap that has the neem oil as its main ingredient. I've used this pretty much the whole year and still have almost a full bottle left. What I do is in about 2-3 to three cups of water, I mix half to a full teaspoon of neem oil along with a few drops of the Castile soap. This is a gentle enough solution for pest prevention. I spray the top soil and the foliage with it about once or twice a month. And when I do have an actual pest infestation, I use the same exact formula and spray my entire plants and also wipe down the foliage to also get rid of any pests that's attached to the foliage real quick and I've noticed that I hardly had any pest problems at all since I started using this as a pest prevention. It won't help with fungus gnats though I've noticed but it does help with everything else. Next is hydrogen peroxide. This is a household item that is also becoming popular with plant care. All you need is a 3% solution, you don't need anything higher than that and I usually mix it with a 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 ratio with water and I use it for soil treatment. So similar with castile soap and neem oil, there's a couple ways that I use the hydrogen peroxide. First, I put the solution with the water in a spray bottle and I use that to spray the top soil of the plant especially when I have a fungus gnats problem. Since fungus gnats love to lay their eggs on the topsoil, this would help kill and get rid of the eggs of the fungus gnats on the topsoil. And second, when I'm transplanting a plant from soil to leca, after I wash the roots off with the castile soap, I spray them with the hydrogen peroxide solution. I never spray this on the foliage of the plant though, especially plants with a lot more delicate foliage because this can burn your plants. 
third way I use the hydrogen peroxide solution is to pour it directly onto the soil and this would help disinfect the soil and help it get rid of not just the fungus nest or any bacteria that might be growing in the soil and this is great especially when you're moving plants from outdoors back to indoors I use this hydrogen peroxide flush on my house plants to make sure that I am not bringing in any pests when I bring my plants from outdoors back to indoors. Next is the fish fertilizer which has a NPK ratio of 511 which means it is rich in nitrogen which makes it great for your house plants and it's also great for outdoor plants and for any organic gardening that you do. This is also very cost effective. I've been using this for the whole year to fertilize all of my house plants and I still have half a bottle left. So what I do is I mix about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of the fish fertilizer in about a gallon of water and that's what I use to fertilize all of my house plants. I fertilize about once a month, maybe twice a month. The only thing that I hate about it is it stinks so much so I probably will stop using it for my plants in my bedroom but will for everything else. Next is Super Thrive. This is more of a plant nutrient, plant vitamin instead of a fertilizer. It has a very low NPK ratio of 0 0.500 so it doesn't really have a lot of the NPK but it is great for transplanting plants and to prevent shock when you are transplanting plants and my plants have been loving this i've initially got this for my plants that in leka but i've also been using this for my plant propagations too after i wean them off of the root and grow and as i also try to wean off my plants off the fertilizer as we head into the winter season Next is this orchid plant mist from Miracle Grove. You've seen me mention this quite a few times during plant mist. I, Miracle Grove is a bit of a shady company, but sometimes it's the only one available to us. But this orchid plant mist has been really good for more orchid plants to keep their blooms and to also help some of my plants to rebloom. It has a very low NPK of 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, so it is safe to use daily and it is a instant feed for your house plants and I spray it all over the foliage, the base of the plant and on the stems and the blooms of the orchids. Next is another household item that I'm pretty sure you already have which is Epsom salt. It is a great plant nutrient. It is not a substitute for fertilizer though but it is a great supplement for your plants as the magnesium in Epsom salt helps your plants absorb the nutrients from your fertilizer a lot better. What I do is I mix a tablespoon to a gallon of water and that's what I use to water my plants in between fertilizing or when I'm just heading into the growing season before I start fertilizing them again or when I'm growing out of the growing season kind of like with the Super Thrive but this one is a lot cheaper and a lot handier because I'm pretty sure you already have it in your kitchen or in your bathroom. I've also used it for my water propagations as well. Next is a pH test indicator. A lot more people buy the entire pH test kit. I don't recommend it. Just buy the pH test indicator if you really want to pH your water because plants do love a pH between 5.5 to 6.5 and most of our tap water which we use to water our plants are a lot higher than that. But all you really need is the pH test solution. As you can see, I've used pretty much quite a lot of it and I've been using it a lot for all of my house plants, not just of my plants in Leica. To test the pH level of your tap water, put some of the water into your vial that comes with the pH test kit. I lost mine, so I'm using this glass instead, but put about three to five drops in it. As you can see, it almost turned green right away and if I compare it to the pH color chart, it would show that my water is between 7 and 8, so around 7.5, which is neutral but still a little bit high for house plants. And you don't need the pH up or pH down solution. All you need is a distilled vinegar or lemon to bring down the pH level of your water. So you only need a very, very small amount of the acid, whether you're using vinegar or lemon i use about a quarter teaspoon to a gallon of water to bring it down to a ph level of six and as you can see when i test this one i put like a little bit more than i need for 
to get down to pH 6 and almost immediately as you can see as it hits the water it's starting to look a little bit orange which makes it around 4 or 5 pH which is a little bit too low for my house plants. To bring it up all you need to do is basically dilute your water with more water and that's what I did with this one. I put more water into the one that I already pH down and now when I put the solution in it is more of a chartreuse color which brings it to pH 6 and that level of pH is most ideal for your houseplants. Last is the soil test kit which tests the pH level of the soil as well as the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium content in your soil and this one comes with their own vial and their own pill respectively and for this one I don't think it's necessary for a houseplant parent to get. It's really if you just want to find out the pH level of your soil and the NPK level of your soil if you're really curious but totally unnecessary if you're having problems with the pH or the NPK content of your soil then just repot your soil or fertilize your plant but what you do is to take a sample of the soil put in a container add some water stir it up and then you let the soil settle at the bottom Ideally, you want to wait a few hours, even overnight, because you want the water to be clear. But since I'm doing this just for the video, I'm rushing the process a little bit. But while I wait for it to settle somewhat, I'm going to show you how to test the pH level. This one is a little bit different. You don't have to do all that. All you have to do is to take some soil sample and put it directly in the vial that is for the pH testing which is the green one and you put it in the smaller slot and you just need a little bit of the soil you just need some of it to reach the first line at the bottom you don't want it to go above that and after that you pour some water and just up to the other line at the top no more than that as well Next, you take the green colored pill, open up the capsule, and pour the powder contents into the water and the soil mixture. And after that, you just seal it really, really well, and then shake it up and wait for the soil again to settle and for the color to change. And it will change eventually to one of the colors that's on the color chart on the side and you can, can compare and see what is the pH level of the soil kind of like with um, testing the pH level of the water but while we wait for the results of the pH test let's do the potassium one so I am putting water into the vial in the smaller side of the container as well and just up to the line and I'm trying to not put as many sediments or components of the soil in it and similar with the pH test I'm taking the orange pill this time and opening up the capsule and pouring the powder into the vial and then shaking it up and also wait for it to settle and change color to tell me what is the potassium level content of my soil. But as I've seen earlier, some of the pills got wet and damaged and I also rushed the process. So I don't know if the results are accurate, but this one is showing that I have a pH 7 soil, which is neutral. A little bit high, but not too bad. And this one says the potassium level for the soil of this plant is deficient. So it probably is going to need more. I'll give it a banana, I guess. And those are the plant care products that I recommend or I think you should skip in 2021. I'll have all the products linked down in the description if you're interested in purchasing them. But thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you on the last day of Plantmas on Christmas Day. Bye!